he does a pass, a slash, he comes out here, does another slash, and controls here. Note that he's behind the person. He's not only flanked, he's completely behind his assailant and using the assailant's body as a shield against the other assailant. Hello people of the internet. Welcome back to another episode of Scenic Fights, Fight Scenes Breakdown. I'm Logan Love. And I'm Chad Vasquez. Before we get into the episode, we just wanted to say thanks to all of our new subscribers. And old ones. And our old ones. Thank you so much for all of your support. We're honestly floored by all of it. We're very appreciative. If you like the work they're doing here, please hit that like button, subscribe, that notification bell, and of course, leave comments on future projects that you guys want to do. So today's episode is actually probably our most requested episode, yes, right? Yes, it is. So we've gotten Instagram messages about it, we've gotten Facebook messages about Some it. Some scary texts, I don't know how you Some guys got our numbers. Texts. Yeah, that's been scary. But we're really excited about this. It's actually one of my favorite films, The Man From Nowhere. And it's so good that there are actually two great knife scenes that we'll be doing. The first one's going to be the melee fight scene with the protagonist Cha against a group of individuals. So let's get right to it. Yep, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, nice, fight's beginning. Good. Oh. Boom, forward roll. Nice. Good, dragging, Oof. I like that. I like that. Just the very beginning of this, there are lots of things I like. The first thing I like is that he's not hunting the body. You see that a lot in movies where people are always trying to hunt the bodies, but as a lot of you have commented before about my saying, oh, make mincemeat of the person, which I would never do in real life. But if I was in a fight, you wanna cut the extremities first. One thing that he did was he cut the tendons here. So he's cutting tendons to weaken the man's grip. Because again, this is how you grip. You grip with this side of the arm and then you open with this side of the arm. So he cut here so that the man was no longer able to grip. And after he was done doing that, knowing that the danger's out of the way, he then proceeded to do the killing blow here on the wrist. Really like that. Why expend the energy to reach for the body if the arm is available for you? Now you see, they're coming to him, so he does have to chase yeah. them. So he does have to back up for distance. He's keeping his eye on the other assailant. Parry, attack, parry, attack. Very good. Ooh, yeah, that is brutal. Okay, let's talk about this real quick. One thing I really like about this is that they make use of angles. You'll note that the cameraman is not just staying in one place because the characters are all moving around yeah, so yeah. much. That's a real fight, right, Chad? Like, you never stay in one place. No. It's also never linear. So he's flanking immediately and attacking from the flank. You know what? Let's break that down right now. In the melee scene, all of the attackers came in in a linear way, and then Cha stepped out by parrying with his blade in the ice pick grip, and by doing this, other targets were open for him. For example, the armpit. He comes in here and slashes the armpit. Note that I'm in a position of safety. I'm either flanked or behind the person where the assailant is now in a place of grave danger. Good, pass, look, he's always trying to get to the back. Nice. Cut underneath the armpit. We need to talk about that. Oh, he's in, a, he's in safety behind the guy. One of my absolute favorite scenes is where Cha is finishing off the man in white. As the man in white comes in, he passes here. He does a slash. Notice he comes around here and slashes the throat. So by slashing the throat here, or capturing, he's now behind the person, and then he's able to stab him from behind. This is an ideal position. His enemy's in front, he's using another enemy assailant as a block for himself, while also finishing him off from a position of safety. There is no way that he can hurt me in a meaningful way, whereas I have killed him in a meaningful way. Okay. Okay. Oh, that looks like an arm lock. Uh, Kimura. Yeah, Kimura, yeah. okay. Now, you'll note that it didn't work. The Kimura, the arm control that he was in, that arm control would have worked had Cha not been armed, correct? Yeah, the guy let go the moment he got stabbed in the leg. Let's right? take a look at that. Let, let's break that down. So here, Chad is going to put me into a Kimura, please. Okay, and I'm going to try to not let him. We're going to go slow, but I'm not going to let him do it. Yeah, I, I couldn't get out of that. But the dynamics change with the knife. I'm now armed. Chad, you're gonna do the same thing? Yep. I'm gonna resist. All right, so now I'm resisting as we're going here. Yeah, that's not gonna work. The introduction of a weapon changes the dynamics of things. So if this was a street fight and Chad was fighting me but did not know that I was armed with an edged weapon, he's in danger because something that should work 
it will no longer work. Totally realistic. And we've actually done uh, some training where you practice yep. having a knife there. And I'll tell you right now, when we try that, weapons change a lot when yep. it comes hands and gloves. So that's for sure a real thing. So far, everything about this scene I love. It's all textbook knife work. Oh, brutal. Okay, Ooh, some flailing. They're committed to their job. I'd be out, dude. I, I, what? After the fourth guy, I'm, I'm gone. They might have good dental. All right. Good point. Good, good. See, now that shows his character. This is a man that's been trained. That I man has been okay. trained. Mm. That's, that's a killing blow. Now, in this film, the protagonist is a trained special operative. This particular killing scene is, when I saw it, I, I, I was really taken aback because it is so accurate. Without getting into too much of the gruesome details, most of the films you see, you see someone's throat being sliced. Here, that didn't happen. He stuck the knife straight through the neck. That is something that is, is rarely seen. I don't think I've ever seen it, but is definitely taught in special forces. Now there's some grappling involved. I'm gonna let Chad take over from here. Guy's attacking. I'm dodging, and I get two points of connection. One in the elbow, one in the neck. I'm guessing that because he's coming in so fast, that with this connection to the neck, he starts pulling down his opponent to the floor. Now remember this rule, where the head goes, the body follows. It's a very common concept you see in different grappling arts, right? Especially in jiu-jitsu, wrestling, sambo, judo, etc. So, I have my connections here, I feel momentum, so it seems Charles starts moving out and pulls the guy down to the floor with this grip. So over here, we're landing, and he falls onto his left shoulder. Now this next part is very quick, but here's what we see. The right leg steps over the armpit to base on the floor there. I'll demonstrate. Back step to control the wrist. And it seems like he's using his leg to trap the arm. This allows Chow to use his thumbs to push off the knife, hold on to the hand or wrist to make sure that the arm doesn't get out. And now he's with a free hand, with a weapon, to the killing blow. And just a quick comment on the killing blow. It's done in a very efficient way that really captures how he's a trained operative. He's not slashing the throat, he's just delivering a straight thrust to the neck. Very efficient. Thank you guys so much for recommending this scene. I understand, I get it. It's an amazing film. I watched it as a fan myself. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to review it. This is a perfect scene. One of the things about this scene that I really enjoyed was how it built up Cha as this operative. You could see that he received some world-class training to be a special operative. That's apparent in how he moved. He retreated when he needed to retreat. He attacked when he could attack, and he constantly tried to improve his position while being safe. And that's something that's very important when it comes to weapons work. In this entire scene, Cha kept himself safe. He kept his assailants in front of him. He made sure that he wasn't flanked while flanking, and he attacked the extremities first before finishing off the bodies. Each time, it really made you feel this guy knows what he's doing, and he's doing it in a very professional, orthodox, efficient manner. I, as a practitioner of Kali, I'm not sure how I can improve upon it. And that's really what I look for when I grade things. Like, if this was a real life situation, what would I have done differently to protect myself or press the attack further? I'm not sure I would have done anything differently. I have to give this an A+. It's a perfect scene. Honestly, great work by the fight choreographers and the director. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, definitely subscribe to our YouTube Scenic Fights channel for more great videos. If you like the videos that you see here, definitely check out the other ones that we've done. If you want to find out more about Pakiti Chersha and Kali in general, our information is down below as well. We're one of the oldest schools in New York, so definitely check us out. If you have any other scenes for us to break down, definitely let us know in the comments below. All right, that's it. Catch you guys soon. Later.